Hello everyone, this is Teresa Bartell with Bartell Financial Coaching and my husband John. Today we will be having Mr. Sean and Mrs. Holly with us today and we will be discussing financial management in a blended family. If you like the content that's being presented to you, I would ask that you would subscribe to my channel and so sit back and enjoy our show and thanks again for viewing. Hi, Holly and Sean. Hello. How are y'all? Good. What's up? Good, good. I am doing good. And Sean, we'll start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, my name is Sean Smith. I'm a retired uh, military. Um, 24 years of service. I've been retired for about five years now, and I'm on a second career as a defense as a defense uh, civilian. I work for a defense health uh, agency as a government employee. And... Uh, I was uh, divorced in 2013 and met Holly in 2014, late 2014, mm -hmm. um, and we were married in 2018. And I, I have uh, three children from a previous marriage, and when we, when we met, um, one was already pretty much out of the house, she was 18, and then we had, um, how, old, how old was Olivia? She was probably 12, 13, so. and then William was like nine. So, uh, they were pretty young. Uh, yeah, young enough. What the, mm -hmm. I think Olivia was just starting high school when we moved here. Okay, and how long did you stay married in your first marriage? Oh, uh, like 16 years. Wow. Yeah. Okay, pretty good. all right. So you wanna give us some background information on you, Holly? So, yes, so Holly, um, obviously you know that. But <laughs> we, um, so I was married for nine years, uh, also in the military. Um, before we met, I was active duty. We both were active duty when we met, and I am now retired from the military. Um, I did 23 years as well, and I'm now um, I've done a few other jobs since I I retired. I've done some contracting, some program management, and I'm cur currently kind of coasting, looking for a, a different position coming up here after the holidays. Try to do something, but I'm a nurse. A labor delivery nurse is my trade, but I've done a bunch of other things, kind of a little outside of that scope, and sort of expanded my options. Um, so I was married for nine years, and uh, when I got divorced, I thought that I was never gonna get married again. So me and Sean was a true blessing, um, but we did have, so I had at the time, um, gosh, so Chloe was, anyways, we, are, we, had a, we had, our daughters were almost the same age, and then I had a son who was right in the middle of the other two, so. Together, that was gonna be five kids, so it was kind of a, an interesting journey from the start. But we dated, our kids got to know each other, and then we got married in 2018, but we moved in together in 2017 with the whole family because the kids were at a transition point where the middle schoolers were about to go to high school, the elementary school was about to go to middle school, so that was kind of a better, like we are planning to get married a year later, but we wanted to move in together so they could all start at the different schools on that, on that perfect transition time. So, and I think that was a good choice. And they got to do middle school all the way through and high school all the way through in the same school district. Um, so that's, I think that's kind of where it all began. And so what you have been married for 16 years, was it a hard decision for you to decide to get married again, knowing what marriage was like? Um, not to Holly, no. She uh, she made it really easy. Uh, she was super good with our kids. And I actually got custody of my kids. So, you know, our divorce was, uh, was, was not pleasant. And so I think that my children, especially the younger two, needed someone like Holly. Because I'm, I'm more of a direct disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. I'm not real touchy-feely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. with my kids, and she she brings that brought that to the relationship very early on. Okay. So no, that wasn't a hard. A well, hard that is good. And so, Holly, with you have been married for nine years, you know what being married was like. To was it hard to make a decision to get married and, and bring your children into? So for the uh, so I was divorced for almost well a, a little over ten years before I met Sean. And I, during that period, I, I did not think marriage was ever gonna be in the future. But same same story, meeting Sean, he just kind of was everything that I had wanted and needed and just perfect. Just we very, we complement each other so well. So even though the timing seemed unexpected, it was, um, we both had the strengths and weaknesses, I think, that do a good complementary balance to the family, which is what has been, 
this together <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> through all the obstacles of the kids and, and trying to balance everything. I think, um, like you said, I'm by far the more touchy feely one, but he's very good because mm-hmm. he's very fair and mm-hmm. um, straightforward. You know, with everybody across the board, and I think that's what makes a difference. So my my ex husband was not fair. He was he was more of the disciplinarian, but in a um, kind of a belittling way to the kids and it wasn't a very healthy environment mm-hmm. and Sean he does a fantastic job of just here's the facts here's the consequence here's the here's the actions just a very fair part of that that I'm not good at because I'm mm-hmm. I'm like oh well so he's really good at that piece that's so we balance each other I think really well you got anything you want to no I, I think that's pretty amazing that y'all were able to jail together all that long time being like divorced or separated and then y'all jailed together got married and blended the family together. I, I think it was hard for Holly because she was at a point in her life where her last kid she's like okay three more years and and, and I'm kind of can move on with no kids in the house and, and uh, a mm-hmm. different kind of phase personally financially everything mm-hmm. and then, then I slammed two more yeah. Young kids in the house. She's like, uh, after she was in a, had several nights where she was like, I don't know how to do this. Seven more years. <laughs> Count down. And so now that you mentioned the children, because they are old enough or were old enough to understand, how was that adjustment for y'all when y'all moved in together? The children are together. You're not their biological mom. You're not the biological father. How did all of that play out? Yeah, for I think initially we did a good job of like, okay, I'm gonna step in for mine. We got together on the same sheet of music to decide what whatever we were gonna do, whether you know for a birthday or for discipline or whatever. But I would kind of be the one to impart that on my kids, and she would impart it on her kids. And over time, that became whoever. It didn't matter, but initially we did it that way just because it made. It was easier, made more sense, it fit better. Okay, so basically you discipline your children and she disciplined hers. Is that, right, but okay. we would agree on whatever we were doing before okay. that person would go. Like, you know, if uh, let's say, you know, William was got 10 missing assignments in school, mm-hmm. um, we'd be like, okay, what are we going to do? All right, so we're going to take his phone. All right, so we'd take his phone until he got caught up or, you know, okay. something to that effect. But I would be the one. To go get to go say to deliver yeah. deliver the message and say th- so either way we both agreed on the proper consequence mm-hmm. but initially you know the biological parent would deliver that just to help ease oh. that transition so that they were right. like oh who's mm-hmm. this coming in you know so it was but we we were together so that if they tried to you know if they balked at it or mm-hmm. whatever we're on the same sheet of music and supported each other you know like I got your back you got my back if they if okay. gonna fight this one you know we're Stand strong. This is what the okay. Is. Okay, so I think a point from that conversation is if you are a blended family and you're bringing children in, let the biological parent present the discipline, but yet the mom and the dad decide what the discipline will be. So because I don't have experience with a blended family, I would have never thought about that. And so yeah. hopefully there might be somebody out here struggling yeah. that's having a problem because that discipline. Can be a problem because us moms are like, you're not going to tell my child what to do. Like, who do you think you are? So, how did you ever have any experience feeling that way? No, I think we actually did a a good job of talking about it. So mm-hmm. we were very good about okay, here's what happened. Let's mm-hmm. go behind closed doors. Let's talk about this. How how do we want to handle it before you know executing anything? And I think that that was a key. Um, component to making things successful because I, I do have a lot of friends that struggle with that same thing like they'll be the initial they'll see something happen they'll do an initial disciplinary action of something on mm-hmm. the non-biological kid and then mm-hmm. the mom or the dad's like what do you think you're doing and it has caused a lot of problems with um, friends that I have mm-hmm. um, and so we we just from the get-go I think we did really good about like whatever happens and there's we got five now so there's plenty of things that could happen we just need to make sure we come together before anything mm-hmm. is said. And that, I think, is is key. It, it saved probably what could have been a lot of those things like you just said. Like, what are you, like, what are you doing talking to my child like that? Mm-hmm. Or saying that we, we never had, have had that issue that I've, that I've seen because we've just been really... No. You know, it, like, you know, I think you have to be careful with that because you don't want 
Like if I was to come in and just start being the heavy, quote unquote, the heavy disciplinary on Joseph, it would have very easily been taken like, well, you're not my dad, you know, and, and caused friction between us. But, you know, you kind of let her initiate that and then I'll back it up, like, you know, and make sure that the, the punch was carried through. But it looks like it's coming from her, from the biological parents, so it's, you know. Okay, okay. And so, did you ever have any feelings that she was being too hard on your girls to where you would think, now she's not going to talk to them like that? Like, have you ever had that feeling? No. You just was okay with the way she disciplined them? I, she's always the, like, person when it comes to a face-to-face -face interaction. So, I, I've yeah. always been the one where... Mm -hmm probably come across to, <laughs> you know I really don't care what your feelings are here's the facts you know where she's much more feelings oriented mm -hmm. than you are yeah okay you want to so, add anything so being in one accord I mean I think that's that's the one accord being in oneness with each other when you talk about disciplinary action against any child is always mm -hmm. good because you know children like to play against each other the parents mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. especially if the mom and daddy ain't agreeing you ain't talked about it, then they will play a play against that. You know, they mm -hmm. might go to dad or go to mom. Hey, what he said, this, but mom, what do you think? <laughs> so I think that was that's that, great. That's that, a great point. That mm -hmm. is like even with y'all sharing this. Like I already have a friend in mind who I want to share this with because I'm not sure that she would even know that this is a great technique to do when you bring in, mm -hmm. you know, children from your, your spouse. Mm -hmm. So now how did y'all handle it when they didn't get along? Cause you had two boys and then you had three girls all together. Mm -hmm. Did they always get along? I feel like they really have always gotten along with a few little- We haven't had any major altercations. There's been some, you know, like when Joseph was driving to high school and we would make him take Olivia, mm -hmm. there would be times where he didn't want to do it or it's like, mm -hmm. well, I want to pick up my friends or I don't want to come straight home. I want to go hang out and do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. There's some dislikes, but not, no, nothing in between the kids where it was a major altercation. Yeah, I okay. never had any fighting or anything. I mean, they'd be like, ah, oh, he's irritating me or something, you know, typical stuff, like small things, mm -hmm. but we never had any like real real frictions. I think they actually surprisingly got along really good and still are close. They all still get along pretty good. Which that was that was a gift I think. I, I don't know if maybe because they were all very, fairly close in age. Mm -hmm. and Olivia were younger but but like the first the top three were very close in age and then and William and Olivia just they, they just kind of grew together pretty well and the way we staggered went you know after one graduated from high school you know, kind of the way it slowly filtered its way out. Mm -hmm. I think it, the balance was good. I don't. If all five were in the house for five years, we may have had more problems. Uh -huh. But, but it, the timing just kind of worked out. Where okay, one one graduates, another one graduates. So, you know, as it got smaller and smaller, it was easier. But they they all they all got along pretty good. Okay, and that's, do. that's good. So like when all of y'all moved in together. That was seven people in the house. So y'all just yeah. figured it out how to make it work. And so the older two had already gone to college. Okay, so that was good. So when y'all moved in, it was just it was, what? It was, it was Joseph. William. Olivia. Olivia. So we had one summer with all seven of us. So yeah, the two girls oh. were home from college. So that first mm -hmm. summer we were in the house, everybody was here. But um, and there was a little, that was a little challenging. So the girls shared the upstairs Mm -hmm. So they kind of had their own little mm -hmm. apartment-ish, but they wanted to stay out late. You know, they had been used to mm -hmm. going to college, so them, mm -hmm. you know, they want to stay out late and listen to music and watch, you know, mm -hmm. movies or video games or whatever. Where with everybody else, it's like mm -hmm. it's bedtime, lights out, you know, no TV, no phones. There was a little bit of how can they get to do it? We did have, mm -hmm. but again, that wasn't between them. It mm -hmm. was more with us having to be like, look, mm -hmm. you know, we had to be. That was a little challenging summer. Because we had to lay the rules down for them mm -hmm. too. Like, even though you do all these things in college when you're home, this is the rule. Like, you mm -hmm. have to follow the rules. So that was, it was um, it was a little bit of a challenging time, but but y'all made it through. No Nothing okay. disastrous. No, that's I, I could see that being a challenge. Yeah. Because you know, being used to your own rules when you're in mm -hmm. college versus coming at home to mom and dad is like. That's a shocker. Like what? I got to do what? Yeah. I, I'm free and 
I gotta, I gotta come in at what time? Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I can see that being. Well, yeah. and doing the dishes and uh, picking oh, up yes. your dirty clothes yes. and you know all the things that they were lazy about when they're in the rooms. <laughs> so I know that was a challenge for your wife. Yes. <laughs> it yes. was. And I think probably as we cohabitated, excuse me, the uh, cleanliness standard was probably upped for everybody because I'm very OCD and mm -hmm. that's um, all of them are like, wow, why do I have to clean my room every day? Can't I just do it every week? And mm -hmm. you know, and that's where I think Sean probably was like, oh, is it that big of a deal? Like, mm -hmm. To me, it's a big deal. Like this is a big deal. So we had to come to some compromises mm -hmm. on, okay, I can give on this, but not on keeping your stuff picked up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's like my hard line. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure for them, it was culture shock. They were like, what? But they what? got it. Yeah. They did. They did. They did. <laughs> and what I would like to say to Sean, I'm personally, my parents were divorced, but I was a daddy's girl. And every time he would get a girlfriend, my feelings would just be hurt to fall. Oh. <laughs> so how did you handle your girls? Did they get any type of jealousy about Holly, like stealing their dad? I think it, at the time, I didn't yeah. catch anything. But I think Chloe was thought that we were going too fast. Mm -hmm. That's your oldest, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I mean, but I'm like, hey, this this is, I'm not going to wait. We're, we're grown adults. I was well into my 40s, so mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Maybe she had some trepidation, but she never, she doesn't like rebel or, or throw a fit or anything. So. Mm -hmm. I think she was the most reserved and accepting me into the relationship, like she mm -hmm. kind of kept her distance a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Never was never unkind or anything. You could just tell she was very guarded, you know. Just didn't want to really let let me into her heart so much. She was mm -hmm. she was very just unsure. Mm -hmm. um, she well, she was the one that I noticed it most in. They may have all felt that way, but mm -hmm. and and she later on kind of told me that that's how she felt too. She was like, I just you know wasn't sure. I didn't want this to. She doesn't trust people very well, so she's like, I didn't want to trust you and get close to somebody and then have that not work out to you and you know, which I, it's just understandable mm -hmm. feelings. But uh, but she was the one that was the most open about how she felt. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the other two shared those feelings, but they they didn't let me know if they did. But they I don't know if they told you anything. But so how did you handle your son being feeling like maybe? Sean was taking his space in your life. So, you know, it's interesting. Joseph was very, he really liked Sean. And I think he needed a strong, solid male figure in his life. Because mm -hmm. though every son wants their dad to be proud of him, Joseph still does. He wants his dad to be proud of him and, you know, to have a relationship. But it's it's just never going to happen. And I think that's a hard, hard thing for him because his dad is just not accepting of anything and has never really lifted him up. But Sean was a very good role model, and I think he, well, I know he immediately just really liked it. Like, he, he I think he was a little guarded at first also, just kind of like, who's this guy, you know? Mm -hmm. But as he got to know Sean, he's said it to me many, many times, Sean is a great dad. Like, I really, I, I look up to him, I admire him. He, you know, he, I think he needed that, and I think he's really, you know, even though he doesn't say a lot of words, I know that he appreciates having Sean. I don't think he saw him necessarily as taken. Well, actually, take that back. Both the kids said, they when we were dating, they did say, you know, you guys spent all this time together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we didn't get a lot of that. No, um, I think about it. They, they all thought we were taking a bunch of time. Because we did. Once we started dating, it was like... It was just done. Inseparable. Like, we were together all the time. Are you guys going out again? Uh -huh. Is he coming over? Is she coming over again? You know, uh -huh. just like... Yeah. But, um... But as we were dating, we did a lot together with the kids. So it wasn't just one-on-one -on -one dating all the time. I think we immediately did a lot of activities with the kids. And I think that helped bridge that gap a little bit more where it wasn't like, you know, we weren't doing a, a dating thing and then suddenly bring the families together. We did right. like, like just from the get-go, you know, find an activities we could take everybody to. And I think that's helped tremendously. I don't, I don't feel like anybody really took a had a big feeling of you're taking his spot or you're taking mm -hmm. her spot or mm -hmm. you know feeling feeling that way mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't I didn't feel that good good so another point that Holly just made is that when you bring your families together it's very important for the families to be together and do activities together and that helps their children 
to adjust more and easier to their fam families becoming one. Do you have anything you want to add? Well, you know, I want to ask, ask a question. So okay. we're, you know, kind of getting a great uh, conversation going. But one of the things I know since y'all was like divorced, each of y'all spouse for so long, and then when y'all decided to start dating, then we eventually got married. One of the things that has always seemed like a challenge in families, um, especially when you come together after the divorce, because you was alone for so long managing your own finances. Sean, you was managing your own finances. How did you bring that together, you know, as a as a married couple now? You know, how did you how did you combine that? How did you bring it together? So <clears throat> Holly did a much better job in her previous before we met in you know establishing saving and, and the budget and all that i pretty much because i was military and deployed a lot and in the field a lot my first wife did most of our bill paying and money management stuff and i wish i'd have been more involved because we were in a lot of credit card debt when i when we divorced we split it but like it, it was a lot like it took me a, a, several several years to dig out of that so Initially, um, we didn't we didn't mix. When we came together and lived under the same roof, we shared the major purchase. Like we're both signed on the house, but we maintained our own vehicles and our own bank accounts. Because I had a lot of stuff I was trying to dig my way out of. Um, so we we kept that pretty separate, and it's slowly gotten more intertwined as we've come along. But we still maintain separate accounts and so forth, just because it. Uh, we both have full trust in that, you know, we're mm -hmm. not hiding anything from mm -hmm. the other person. We both have each other's login and, you know, whatever, if something happens. But every day, every month, we'll sit down, go through all of our shared expenses and split those 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean. And I, I think that works really good, too. So, like, when he says shared expenses, you know, so we take groceries, electricity, like all the things that are a shared expense and we buy that and I'm like okay you know whatever it comes to those you, we make, you pay me I pay you whatever our balances owed are and then that way I have liked that because it allows some autonomy too so if you want to if you want to do something like if I want to get fancy hair done or nails done or something mm -hmm. I can do that and not that's not going to be a shared expense that's a treat mm -hmm. to myself but if he wants to go do something fun good but um so yes yeah, so we've We've done pretty good, and there's been a few times where we've had like a major purchase that we'll we'll do, and then we talk about how we're going to port that into a plan. You know, to mm -hmm. okay, when are we going to pay this off? Because we've always anything big, it's never pay the minimum payment on anything. It's okay. We need this paid off in one year or six months. So, um, you know, we we kind of converse on what do we really need? Like, what's our budget? Looking at both of our our budgets, what, how long do we have to mm -hmm. pay this off? That all needs to be our draft and then we mm -hmm. just make that be the standard payment. Okay, we're gonna do it in X number of months, this is our payment, we agree on that, and that just becomes part of our bill. So every month we do a, um, a really good assessment of the bills and what we, mm -hmm. what we are splitting and not splitting and paying off and try to keep tabs on anything that's, mm -hmm. you know, anything new coming up, and if, if we have any, anything we wanna plan, we have to look at, okay, this has to be paid off first, we have to do, like clear, open, and the budget. Like, hey, mm -hmm. on your birthdays, we're not, you know, your budget for your birthday, no matter how you want to do it, between gifts, dinners, or whatever, mm -hmm. is going to be $400 or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. right? uh, same thing for Christmas. Matter of fact, she already just sent out the, the family chat and a mm -hmm. text and said, all right, here's the, here's the limit. You can, you can, you know, tell us if you want that cash or give us a list of gifts, but, you know, don't come tell me you want a thousand dollar Xbox. <laughs> or a thousand dollar purse. Uh huh. Yeah. Because it's crazy. iPhone, like, no, that's, mm -hmm. we'll give you $300 toward that. Mm -hmm. Right. If that's what you want, or whatever. So we try to do that. We, we keep telling them, uh, you know, we want to get to the point where um, if they can all just be independent, which we have one that's doing very well for herself, and then Joseph's scraping by he does okay mm -hmm. the other three are struggling really bad so we have to help them out periodically but then it's like all right we'll help you out here 
So that means like we like to take the family and go on a cruise as your present, but until yes. we can get yeah. all you guys to relax on your own, mm -hmm. we can save that money, then, then we can't. You know? So, uh, and plus we, we're not doing a good job ourselves. We like to travel a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. like we will overextend ourselves on the travel piece, but. Um, I would say what one thing that, if we could go back and do it differently, we, you know, both so like, you had three people to buy for, I had two people to buy for. So at Christmas, we both probably had a higher budget for our kids. And when we came together, we still had a higher budget and we spent that higher budget for the first couple of years. But when you take, when you go from two to three to five to seven, mm -hmm. as they get significantly bigger, our family has just grown, grown, grown. Mm -hmm. And trying to maintain the budget that we had, which was a lot more um, glamorous for them, we can't keep doing that. So if I could reverse time, I would have, as soon as we, well, from the get go, I should have kept my kids at a low budget too. But at least when we were like, okay, our family has just doubled. Mm -hmm. We need to really look at our Christmas budget, birthday budget. It needs to automatically be cut down and just start, set the bar there. I wish we would have done that differently because now we're trying to go the other way and be like, Hey, I know you guys have expected this, but now we're down to here. We have to drop it. And it's, you know, I'd like to think that they're maturing, they're older and they're, going to accept it better but it's it's gonna get it's gonna probably be disappointing for them because i think in the back of their mind they're like yeah this is the budget you're telling us but i bet you we're gonna get more mm -hmm. i think that's probably what they're hoping <laughs> for and thinking and so it's it's gonna be a little tough this year because they're gonna they're getting a pretty significant cut in the in the budget mm -hmm. but one well, of the other challenge is you know well two of them have significant others now so that's right. Yeah. So, like, is it fair that do we do a family budget for those? Because you know, I don't know. It's just difficult to work in mm -hmm. the significant others too, and try to still make it equitable. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, does the significant other um, should they have the same budget as the as the spouse? You know, as the child. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, of course, two of them now have little mm -hmm. little people. So, of course, that's that's a, they're not they're a different budget. Yes. On that end. But still, <laughs> yes. it's just, it just keeps growing. So mm -hmm. at some point, they have to understand well, they can't, can't yeah, right. maintain the same, mm -hmm. same spending as you keep multiplying. Right. And so here's a little tough question. Okay. So since y'all have like separate accounts and then y'all came into the marriage with different budgets, how did it feel like if she like just went nuts buying for her children? but then your children didn't have the same amount of luxury as hers, you know, so that could cause some friction. How did y'all handle that? Yeah, I mean, that's what we said. We we would just talk about what are we gonna do for birthdays? And then if there was, like, we had a, a discussion one time about vehicles. So, you know, all, we had, I had Chloe and she had a vehicle that I got for her before we came into this relationship. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, she had a vehicle for Marie that was hers, but she paid it off and gave it to Marie. So then Joseph came, and so he had a vehicle that, uh, he went through several vehicles, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they all had. Mm -hmm. um, so then it became Olivia, what were we gonna do with her? And so, and you know, Holly was like, hey, you know, she needs to pay for this and that. And I was like, wait a minute, that's not what we did with the other three. Like, they didn't, mm -hmm. We didn't force them to pay anything mm -hmm. while they were in high school on the house. Now, once they go to college or start a career, then you need to pay for your own insurance or have some skin in the game mm -hmm. and slowly kind of take that over on your own. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we didn't really have to do that with Olivia because she just never really wanted a vehicle for some strange reason. Mm -hmm. so. I, but see, I, we had a challenge with that because so... I guess, and, and um, I mean, when you explain it, it makes more sense, but I have, have just never thought you should, you should buy a kid a car. Like, to me, that is not my, what I believe in. It's not how I was raised. So I had two cars. After I got divorced, I had two cars. So I did have one because one was like a smaller, sporty car, and one was the like, SUV mm -hmm. to take everybody. So as that one got paid off, and then Marie was able to drive, and Joseph, they had that vehicle, I had, it was like, it was an extra car I had. Mm -hmm. They weren't ever gonna get to take that with them anywhere. So in mm -hmm. my mind, I'm like, that's not their car, it's my car they're borrowing. Mm -hmm. 
that they can use while they're here. But when they leave the house, when they graduate, they need to buy their own car. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what they did. They did buy their own car when they left. So I guess that's where we kind of, that was a challenge for us. Cause I still was like, we're not buying a kid a car, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but, but we didn't have the luxury of having an extra car when mm -hmm. Olivia came up to drive. So we, he was like, but they got to have a car, which they did mm -hmm. because of the circumstance it worked out. But mm -hmm. it was hard for me to want to buy a kid a car. So to add a third car to the picture was mm -hmm. very challenging for me. But like you said, it kind of worked out that she didn't want one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it sort of worked out in that favor, but it's, that's still probably a difficult, a difficult thing because I just feel strongly about it. Mm -hmm. But um. But now, as moving forward with Olivia and Chloe and Olivia, again, they also went through some vehicles. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't last long with these kids. But um, <laughs> we were not going to get them a car. We're like, this is it. You, you know, you have, your driving record has, <laughs> has taken away all these vehicles. We're not going to help you. Mm -hmm. But what that was causing us, because now you add the grandkids. So we had a different variable included mm -hmm. who needed to get to the babysitter or appointments or whatever. So we were doing all this extra driving. And then that's where it was like, we either keep exhausting ourselves or we get them a car to share and it's an unburden to us. Even though the principle of it, I disagree mm -hmm. with. Practically, it's, I think needs to happen. So that was kind of where we re revisited that topic again. Mm -hmm. And, and that it is helping. It's helping our stress level now. Mm -hmm. with, even though they struggle trying to share one car, but it's taken some of that burden off of us, mm -hmm. a significant amount for the most part. So that was good. The, the hopes are that they will pay back for this car mm -hmm. if they ever get on top of their finances. But it's that's a, that is a challenge. Yeah, but I guess y'all agreed to disagree, but y'all still did what was best for the family and what was best for y'all too. Y'all just went ahead and got the car, which really helped save some stress off of y'all. Mm -hmm. Like, even though you didn't really want to buy a car. But y'all did. And, and the other thing that that giving them a vehicle did was help them get in a better position to help themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So they could go to job interviews or they could yeah. take on a, a secondary job mm -hmm. um, without us having to worry about transportation for them. Or, mm -hmm. You know, it's like, well, I could go get this other job, but I would have to Uber to and from, or mm -hmm. right. you know, something to that effect. So yeah, it, it's which is additional money you got to pay the Uber to get right. there. It's it, kind of like it, this it's zero sum game mm -hmm. you know, at that point. So yeah, it, it's it's not it doesn't sit well with either of us. We agree with that, but it's like uh, it just kind of just made more sense to do it that way. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a nice car, just mm -hmm. something to get it from A to B. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, that's that's still a, a challenge. And then we have uh, our youngest up in college right now, and um, we haven't gotten him a vehicle either. So he hasn't even got his license. He's at the point where we're like, <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to get a job, come up with some savings, and we'll mm -hmm. help you. But you're gonna have some skin in the game. Mm-hmm. Before y'all just buy one and give it to him. Yeah, right. that's not. He'll good. have to help him contribute to it. So that's probably pretty good though if you think about it because we got skin in the game you talking about finances and person making a major purchase like that It makes them have a, a sense of ownership Right, right. No, I, absolutely. I think that finances are a big thing that we try to instill in these kids and that's Where it's it's such a heartache when they don't want to listen because it's a very hard thing it, I don't know if there's a magic way to get kids to get to be better with their money I wish that they would Mm -hmm. in, invest in some learning so maybe mm -hmm. it doesn't it comes not from the parents because some mm -hmm. kids listen to their parents most kids don't they but they'll listen to somebody else mm -hmm. if this can go on tiktok maybe they'll listen to it tiktok it's got to yeah. be good you know? right <laughs> so just the to be independent so i think that um for me like that's why i feel so strongly about not buying them a car because i feel like you need to learn how to balance your money so mm -hmm. that in the real world you will be able to make payments on a car or mm -hmm. other things again it's all about you know the goal as a parent is to launch your child to independence right. in the adult world that's mm -hmm. that's our our goal and if they get in the adult world and they can't mm -hmm. manage money we've done in my mind we've done something mm -hmm. wrong. okay so I feel like that's a very hard daily, how, how do you daily, make your daily, what am I trying to say, activities and mm -hmm. 
the examples that you set for them to take that and be like, oh, I want to I wanna be independent. I want to be able to have money. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with, with all five of them, some have done that, some have not. And mm -hmm. I don't know what we can do differently so that everybody across the board would do that. Mm -hmm. But That's saving good. money, I think now this generation is getting harder and harder. And mm -hmm. it's we're competing with our friends, even our own in our own neighborhood. The kids are being allowed to stay home from, you know, they graduate from high school, they stay home with their parents, the parents buy them a car, and then you're, you're competing with that. Because then it's like, well, how come you won't let me stay home? How come mm -hmm. I, you won't buy me a car? Right. But, I mean, our belief is we don't think that that's helping you succeed mm -hmm. in the adult world. Mm -hmm. Like that's, mm -hmm. you know, that line of help versus hinder mm -hmm. is is a difficult one and especially when you've got everybody around you mm -hmm. or the majority of people around you are not having the same thoughts like, right. oh, no, we just wanted to give them more or we just thought this mm -hmm. would help them get out faster and it does the opposite mm -hmm. it helps stay longer stay longer, stay longer. yes <laughs> <laughs> stay longer. But, well now like getting back to finances since y'all keep y'all accounts you know you have your account and you have yours how do y'all do y'all savings do you have your own savings and you have your own savings yeah, so uh, most of mine is done through my work mm -hmm. uh, via TSP, which is like a 401k for government employees. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she's got, she's done a lot, a lot more diversification than hers. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I had more um, just like mutual funds and investments mm -hmm. coming in that have just kind of stayed, just kind of kept those. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the military retirement, TSP, those, those are still mm -hmm. sitting there. And then... I had a 401k with the last few jobs that I had. Hopefully okay. that will continue with mm -hmm. whatever job I take. I mm -hmm. fully love the companies that match. If you put yeah. in your 401k mm -hmm. and you're matching, that's, to me that's a given. Like you at least have to put in what they're going to match mm -hmm. at a okay. minimum. Um, but yeah, we have our separate investments, but you know, we've, mm -hmm. like he said, we've got visibility of everything and, and you know, if ever we need to, if ever we get into a crisis point of needing some emergency money mm -hmm. we know we can sit down and look at like okay where is what what, mm -hmm. what do we have that we can we can work with if we need it okay so now here's a good question so if either one of you dies tomorrow do y'all have each other's names on y'all accounts like your checking account and your savings account so like if god forbid as beneficiaries well, you can have them down as a beneficiary, but you know you gotta wait and get the death certificate. So just say like, mm. if Sean passes tonight, can you walk into the bank and say, okay, I need to draw out da 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 because if your name is not on the account, then you won't be able to get access to it until you have a death certificate. So I don't think we've done to that level, but we do have each other's login so we could transfer bank it from her account to mine and vice true. versa all all through heck on your phone even yeah um and and we do have a will uh, that that is updated with mm -hmm. know, that kind of spells out some of those logistics too um but that that's probably not a bad idea to put mm -hmm. a secondary person on your account yeah, I, didn't that. I didn't think about that at all like in the unfortunate moment if that happened it yeah, because like what I have learned, like we could transfer the money and all this stuff, but what can happen like when it goes to probate mm -hmm. and they see you moving money after the person passes, then it could cause you problems. Like it would virtually be like stealing yeah. because uh -huh. you're not on the account. You know what I mean? So okay. like even with me and my mom, I have like her account information and all of that, but when they did her will and all of that, they was like, if I were to transfer money from her account after she passes, then that could cause problems for me because it's really like I'm stealing because oh. she never gave me permission to be on her account. Oh, so, interesting. Okay. Yeah, so that might be something that y'all can consider. And then if you are a blended family, then maybe if you're and your spouse, if y'all don't have each other's names on your account, it might be something that you want to consider doing in the event that one of you loses your life, you'll have access to his or her accounts. Mm -hmm. that's, that is a good point. Well, and you, and you mentioned parents. Like, uh, I have a mom that's, um, she's she's a widow, so she's by herself. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's got anybody else on her accounts. So no. Might yeah. be something to consider for her. Yeah, it would be mm -hmm. very 
challenging for you to get. You just gonna have to wait for it to go through probate, you know, and yeah. then the judge gonna have to tell y'all what to do with it. And so it'll just be easier if she add at least one of you. Yeah. That's you know, yeah, one that's, of her sons. That's really good advice. What do y'all think about Where family counseling to help blended families Lollipop, thank you. jail together? Do y'all think family counseling is good for blended families so you can kind of like get an understanding and everybody can adjust or y'all get it without? Um, I'm a big fan of counseling if you can find a, a, a right counselor. Okay, uh, so that's the point. Mm -hmm. Okay, find, find somebody you trust that kind of shares your values and um, key point. And, and and is is I don't know how to say you know a very a confident person that can help. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've 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 gone through a lot of counselors in my life, and some have just not been very helpful. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's, I think, the I am also a big fan of counseling. Yes. I think it's it's very valuable, but it's finding that right one is the biggest challenge, <clears throat> especially when you're trying to do family counseling, and you may have unwilling participants, especially the kids that are mm -hmm. kind of not always excited mm -hmm. about that. And if you go to one session and it's like, boy, I don't connect with this person, mm -hmm. you've knocked down a layer of their um, willingness because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, see, this doesn't work. So. It, that's a hard part because you're going to have to sometimes try multiple people mm -hmm. before you find mm -hmm. that right one. And so that can be a challenge if, if people aren't engaged anyways. And then by the time you get to three or four, they may, you may finally find a really good person. But by then, if they're like, this is a waste of my time, you may have lost, mm -hmm. lost their interest. So if I could recommend maybe as a couple searching out the counselor first possibly going through a few sessions mm -hmm. that way if you have to weed through some people maybe we could bridge that before bringing the whole family together like try to find someone that mm -hmm. we agree oh this would be a great person mm -hmm. um, and of course recommendations from friends are typically the best friends or family that mm -hmm. have um, had experience with good counselors that's where I found the best when I've when I've um, gotten recommendations from people is where I've landed the best Okay, good. Well, it, it is recommend. I, I strongly recommend it though because oftentimes, you know, especially when you get the the teenage teenage years, you know, you don't know nothing. Your oh. parents, you don't you don't you don't know what you're talking about. Right. So to have a, a third party, competent professional, to you know maybe mm -hmm. back up some things that you're trying to say or reinforce mm -hmm. different different uh, things in their life, like. Um, what was William used to always say stuff to us like, "Well, all of all of uh, we go through his phone, right? Just oh, to yeah, kind of just see, all right, you know what's going mm -hmm. on." And he was like, "None of my, none of not one of my other friends. I don't know not one other person who their parents go through their phone." Mm -hmm. like, well, I don't know if that that's the case, but that's something that you know we brought into a session, and you know got a little bit of backup mm -hmm. so I'm like well that's how it's going to be yeah. here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so y'all so. recommend counseling to families before you just give up and throw in the towel Absolutely. just Absolutely. try to seek out counseling get recommendations and somebody good so like with you having a teenage son I'm sure he thought that was the end of the world for you to go through his phone mm -hmm. but you went to counseling with him and did that make it a little bit easier I mean, I don't think he fully ever came around, but it did. It was helpful to to ease ease the ease those friction points because mm -hmm. it's at least another person that can say, "No, you know, that's there's some bad people out there and things mm -hmm. that are trying to scam you, or mm -hmm. you know, maybe you're talking to adults and you don't know it, or you know, right. whatever it might be. You want to know what's going on? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. Um, and I always like to say. You know, I'm sorry what's going on in your other friend's house, but this is our house. So we're going to check yes. your phone. Yeah. Well, gonna, we, try to, we try to say, well, you know, it's because <clears throat> we care. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe your other friend's parents don't care as much, but we do care. But mm -hmm. to try to, of course, th they don't receive that as you caring. They mm -hmm. receive that as you're controlling. Mm -hmm. So having that third party help back up, mm -hmm. it is because yeah. they care. They want the best. You know, having somebody else facilitate that was very good okay good good and okay. communication you know teenagers mm -hmm. don't talk anyway right. so mm -hmm. just having yeah. somebody to right. open that door of communication mm -hmm. better or mm -hmm. you know smooth certain things out that maybe they wouldn't say to you to your face but having a 
the mm-hmm. safety net of another right. person. I think that has that's got a lot of value also. Okay, well, good, good. So, in closing, I'm gonna ask you and Sean. I want y'all to give two to three points to blended couples to help to be successful with their finances or in raising their children together. So, Sean, if you can go first and give us two to three points, anything you can tell them that can help. Yeah, I would say early on, force conversations at the dinner table or wherever that that you can say, hey, what give everybody a say in what they're liking about the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, the do's and the don'ts, uh, you know, whatever whatever you're going to do in your relationship with bringing folks together, just make sure everybody has buy-in mm-hmm. and uh, has a say. Mm-hmm. Uh, not everybody's going to agree, but at least you can have a place, a negotiation point and mm-hmm. people don't feel like you're just forcing, mm-hmm. forcing them into something that they have no control over. Um, yeah, I think we touched on it early on, but you know, as the, the as the non biological parent, just be careful. You know, coming across as a dictator or trying to just change their whole life. On, uh, mm-hmm. um, maybe let your the biological parent kind of take the lead in some of those things. Mm-hmm. But the most important that part of that is to make sure you guys are on the same. You're gonna mm-hmm. have the same understanding and follow through on whatever is going on. Mm-hmm. Um, those would be my two big things. And then what about a financial suggestion? Well, um, I, I, we tried to, to get all of our kids to establish some savings and mm-hmm. uh, get a job, save some money so that mm-hmm. when they go into the next phase of their life, they have they have money to start with right mm-hmm. like a, if you want to get an apartment you got something mm-hmm. to pay their upfront deposit um, mm-hmm. whatever it might be uh, that's worked with some and hadn't worked with others just because of situations they've gotten themselves into but mm-hmm. um, yeah I don't think it ever hurts to to bring in like a, an accountant or a financial counselor mm-hmm. and have, have them come talk to to the kids because mm-hmm. again uh, well, let me back up and give an example. Like for William, um, he didn't really want to do savings, mm-hmm. um, and we were almost making him. Mm-hmm. Like we would deposit his check and take like fifteen or mm-hmm. percent or so and put it in a savings account because I'm like, this is gonna help you with your car mm-hmm. or wherever you go after high school. And so uh, we did have a, a third party like the account mm-hmm. person that we were looking to do some investments with and he talked to all the kids one on one about it. Okay, that was so that helped. Okay, that was good. Okay, what about you? Yeah, so uh, just to caveat on the financial thing, I agree with that. Even though it didn't one hundred percent work out with all of them, but I think having um, as as soon as they are making money, if it's babysitting when they're 12, you know, as soon as they are making some income or if they get paid for chores or something, mm-hmm. have a bank account set up in their name for them so that they can actually have have money in a checking and then a savings and mm-hmm. teach them from the, as soon as they are getting cash in their hands or a paycheck to put half in their, you know, half or 25% in their savings mm-hmm. and the rest in the checking. I think that is a very valuable lesson to start as soon as soon mm-hmm. as possible at the youngest age and then maybe as they get closer to 16 17 18 what I wish we would have done is also added okay let's look at a mutual fund mm-hmm. or something like that where they could invest you know another five percent ten percent whatever depending on what they're doing because that's going to be money they're not going to touch mm-hmm. you know later mm-hmm. on they may drain their savings if they decide to do that but if you put it in the mutual fund they would at least have that as a backup. I wish we would have um, started that, added that to it. I still think it's a good idea that they all had checking mm-hmm. and savings. Mm-hmm. That I would recommend for sure, but if I could have added one more thing, it would have been that. Okay. Um, and then what about in your marriage? And then How for, to, yeah. for us, I think the the pro- as proactive as possible. So when we were getting ready to, you know, okay, this is the decision we're gonna make, we're gonna be getting married, bring, bring two households together, to, to talk about how we're going to do our finances and not try to just wing it, you know, mm-hmm. as you go through, because that's what I, I know a lot of people do do that, and it, it can be kind of catastrophic. It's just down to be like, okay, we're gonna, 
we're going to keep our accounts as, you know, however you decide to do it. But to have that upfront conversation uh -huh. about how you're going to manage your budget. And then the other thing, too, is when it comes to gifts, because you had alluded to earlier, like, when, how do you feel if one of you is buying a luxurious things for these kids but not for the, you know, mm -hmm. the biological? We never really did that. And I think that's important because it, we were, the budget's the same across the board. So mm -hmm. we, um, I think being a, a fair with all the kids on whatever you're going to buy. So, you know, you're not buying this one a Disney castle and that one mm -hmm. a, a Barbie. You, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that it's fair and that we agree on that. So if there's going to be purchases mm -hmm. other than, you know, a hamburger here or there, but if you're going to buy gifts for any of the kids, that we talk about it so that we, you know, if it's, let's say we were to split up going mm -hmm. shopping, we know what our budgets are for all the right. kids. So okay. I think that's, to be fair, that is very important because okay. there can be huge problems if, like what you had mm -hmm. kind of mentioned, if one person is spending a bunch mm -hmm. on the biological food but not the others, I mm -hmm. think that that is not a healthy, healthy way to spend money. I think communication about money is a very important thing. We've also even been very, like, this is what it's going to be for college. Right, okay. so mm -hmm. we're both military. We get certain benefits mm -hmm. that uh, th not only through the military but through the VA. Mm -hmm. And so we've been re really clear, like this, that's the parameters. Mm -hmm. right? If you want to go to Yale, that's great. That's no problem. Mm -hmm. but, but that's yeah. going to be on you. Uh, there's about mm -hmm. uh, 50 universities mm -hmm. here in Texas that mm -hmm. you can go for free. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so. You know, okay. We have to try to like say, okay, yeah, we'll support you going to Yale, but mm -hmm. then it's other, yeah. other, um, it's a big burden. College is a big burden. You got anything else you want to add? No, I think those are some great points you know, that they pointed out. Good, good points. Yeah, mm -hmm. so Holly and, and Sean, I want to thank y'all so much for spending your afternoon talking to us about how to manage being a good blended family. So I appreciate your time. And, and for my viewers, I want to say thank you so much for watching our show. And again, we thank Holly and Sean for being here with us. And if you enjoyed the content we presented to you, I would ask you to please subs to subscribe to my channel where I will be having shows presented every Thursday. So thanks again for watching and joining. And so please be my guest and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Until next time, good night. Bye-bye.